Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would clarify a point of contention here. A lot of people have gotten upset with me for uh, staying in the past that I'm against reverse pyramid training because it's, it's trendy, goofy nonsense. It's programming for lazy people. And when I say that, I'm not talking about all reverse pyramid training, and I'm going to clarify the difference here. I am talking about the type of reverse pyramid training where people reduce weight and do not add reps. In other words, they're just trying to generate as much fatigue as they can as quickly as possible, where people are taking very short breaks, something like a minute, minute and a half, and they're essentially taking something like a five or six rep max, right? Doing a heavy five rep set, reducing the weight 10%, doing another five rep set, or six rep set, reducing the weight another 10%, and then repeating, okay? And I had a client who, when he first started working with me, trained that way, and he was stupidly weak. He was stupidly weak, and he had been following one of those programs. He was out of shape, had no work capacity, and had been training that way for something like six months, and he already had, you know, a couple of years of training under his belt before that. Did training like that, and the guy could barely squat two plates aside for reps. He could barely deadlift three plates. This guy now deadlifts five plates. Okay. He squats mid-300s on his box squat. I haven't even tested the guy's back squat. Uh, squats, does almost 400 pounds on a good morning now. Benches well up into the 200s. And he was struggling with, with 200 pounds for fives when we started this. Okay. So, he ran into problems with this. And it, does, it doesn't work. And essentially, it is just bad programming being used to market to lazy people. And I'm going to get into why I'm saying that. And I'm not talking about all reverse pyramid training. I'm talking about this trendy stuff that gets put out as programs. I'm not going to name names. because You guys know which people are selling this type of programming. It's bad. Okay, it doesn't work without a bunch of gear. And none of these guys who are selling it, who are claiming they're natty, are natty because they're too big and they're too strong to be using this piss poor training. And they're, people running their programming don't get big or strong. That's the caveat. That's the caveat. There are people who are not getting results. And the reason for that is that we have studies on this, and people don't seem to grasp that. And they'll say, what do you mean? What do you mean we have studies? We don't have studies on this. We do. They just didn't call it reverse pyramid training. Look at the studies on rest time. Rest time and hypertrophy. We don't even need to get into the strength end. Let's just talk about the hypertrophy side, the muscle growth, because people who are doing this are usually trying to get bigger. Right, they're trying to gain muscle mass. People are not generally training like this to uh, excel at powerlifting or Olympic lifting or strongman. Look at the studies on rest time. What have we found? Studies show that if you're doing close to limit sets, like let's say they, a lifter is doing three sets of a big exercise. If they re take rest times out long enough to where they can replicate their performance, and in other words, uh, let's say that they took a study and they were looking at 3 by 8 on the barbell squat and the bench press, right? Three sets of 8. If they could complete those with 225 and maybe they only had one rep left in the tank, maybe they could have gotten 9. Eighth rep was looking a little sloppy. And they rest long enough to do 8 reps again, and then rest long enough to do 8 reps again, basically getting within one rep of failure with longer breaks. And they've tracked this in studies. They gain more muscle than people who take shorter rests and have to reduce what they're doing. In other words, in order to get, if you cut the rest times down so low that you have to take 10% of the weight off to get eight more reps, and then 10% again to get eight more reps, even though you did three sets of eight that were all technically the same rate of perceived exertion, they gain less muscle mass. In other words, if you're only taking a minute break and then you have, have to reduce weight to replicate, you do not gain as much muscle as if you took longer breaks to do three sets of eight with the same weight each time. Now, people will say, but Jason, isn't, isn't volume one of the biggest drivers of hypertrophy? Well, you're doing less volume. You're doing less effective volume. In other words... It's not the fact that you're getting close to failure or reaching muscle failure that is a stimulator of growth. It's the amount of effective reps. And as you get close to failure, you get more effective reps. But here's the thing. 
a lot of the muscle fibers that give you most of your hypertrophy tend to be faster twitch type fibers. They're not your endurance fibers. In other words, if you do your 10 rep max, you don't even hit any of the upper threshold uh, muscle fibers with the first five reps. You're basically doing the first five reps with the same muscle you use to go jog. Especially the first three or four reps on a 10 rep max. Now, people will say, but if you're fatigued, if you're fatigued already, doesn't that mean that you're still hitting those upper threshold fibers if you're, if you're reaching muscle failure? No, because those muscle fibers haven't recovered enough to fire again. They're not being used at all. They're just not being used. And if they're not being used effectively, you're not going to get a training response. You're not going to see muscle growth stimulus. So yes, the amount of weight on the bar relative to the reps matters. It matters a lot. And yes, you're generating more fatigue, but it's not fatigue that's helping you grow. You're just increasing endurance at that point. So if we're taking short breaks and being forced to reduce the weight to maintain similar reps, you're not growing from that. And I would even suggest that those studies that look at that, I would suggest that you're not getting three sets worth of growth. The reason they see growth, decent growth, but not as good of growth as the, the sets with the longer breaks is because really they're just doing one set. They're just doing one set. And this is a problem with extended sets and forced reps and all this other stuff that people do. You know, they have this idea, well, I'm just taking the muscle fibers to, to get the complete failure. No, you already did that. All those subsequent reps you're doing with the drop sets, the reverse pyramid, the forced reps, the rest pause, everything else, all you're actually doing is hitting your endurance fibers again. You're hitting the same muscle fibers that you use to warm up with. You're basically just doing a warm up afterwards. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it burns, but it's not producing a real training response. That's the problem. Uh, at least not the type that we would want. So what I'm suggesting here is that people would be better off just doing straight sets with longer breaks. You're going to see more muscle growth and probably see more strength from training this way. Now, the caveat would be, could you see the same amount of muscle growth if you did reverse pyramid training with longer breaks and you took things over to limit sets? In other words, if you took close to your five rep max, and did five reps with it and then rested three minutes and then did J close to your eight rep max and then did about eight reps with it and then took a three minute break and again extrapolated over to 12. Could you do that type of reverse pyramid training and make pretty much close to maximum muscle gains? Sure, absolutely. But you have to be back over to the effective reps relative to your one rep max. In other words, you can't do 10 reps with your 15 rep max just because you're fatigued and expect it to produce hypertrophy. If you're too fatigued, you're probably out of shape. You have no work capacity. You have no interest at recovery. You need to get into better shape. And you're not going to get into better shape by training that way. Therein lies the problem. You get in better shape by just doing higher training volumes with higher reps. So if you can't get in shape, you probably need to go do some GPP. You should, you should consider doing some 10 rep squats at 70% of your max. You should consider dragging a sled. You should consider doing some barbell complexes because you're out of shape and you have no work capacity. And if that's the case and that style of training is going to produce completely mediocre results for you. So when I say that I'm against reverse pyramid training, I'm not against the other type. I don't think it's necessarily the best way to train. I think you would be better off hitting maxes for your heavy work and then doing higher reps at, at appropriate programming and just do sets across. I think that incorporates the best of both worlds that people want to get from the reverse pyramid training. But you could make really, really good gains doing it. But the trendy type that people are promoting to where you are not getting effective reps, you're just trying to get out of the gym quickly and generate a bunch of fatigue as, as quickly as you can to get out of the gym in 30 minutes, that's not going to be that effective. You're just simply not going to make anywhere near your maximum muscle growth from that. 
All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.